Right, hi, and here I am, as promised, to talk about and show you, really, the um, part of the project which involves the um, skeleton, so it's the starting off um, of the piece. And whilst it doesn't have to be millimetre accurate because you can adjust as you go, it's still um, quite important and I'll, I'm going to take you through the little details and the decisions and why they matter basically in this particular project um, of the tiger so i'm going to go to the overhead camera um, and do it mainly there unless i need to nip back so let's go to this camera first right so here we are this is actually um, a blown up because this is the size that i'm actually going to do it because this is how i work i i find the skeleton that i'm going to use and then I basically photocopy it and do it to the size that I want it. You know, not a very good copy, as you can see, it's really faded, but it doesn't matter, just as I've got these major lines, which is what I'm going for. So this was the picture that I originally showed you. Um, perhaps if I go to that, this is the picture I originally showed you in the presentation which shows this skeleton that I'm actually going to be working from as well as the um, muscles, the musculature um, around those, well, around the skeleton basically. So you, you can see exactly where it happens. Now one bit, let me go back to the bigger picture. One of the things which I um, have to consider is this bit here the shoulder blades because on certain animals i make a big deal out of these when i did my wolf um the way um a dog or a wolf's head is the neck tends to be um in down here now that's why it's quite useful to see this because i can see that this is actually all joined up there is no you know going bending down and the neck coming out of there whilst they hang their head it's still very much so uh, there's no point in me making a big deal about the shoulder blades now I'm going to show you an example so I want to show you this um I can move that out of the way you can see that this is actually um going to be a dog well um a particular type of dog anyway um there i made a big deal about the shoulder blades because the dog's neck definitely comes down and out and that's very much the way it hangs so i made a big deal out of it but i'm not going to do that in this one so i just it's worthwhile just showing you this is you know how all of my skeletons okay um end up like this which is i start with a long piece which vaguely shapes where the head is going to go depending on whether there's a long snout or not then i do the shoulders um, and then i join bits to make the legs and come back onto the back legs and as i say when i join the bits for the legs it all depends if i'm making a big deal about this because obviously with this piece which is going to be the pangolin we obviously do not make a big deal out of that because they don't have these huge shoulders um, but you can also see they have quite a different um, look here as well okay so it, they don't have any kind of shoulder that I need to allow for whereas on these ones you know we have this bit which does come out to here this bit here comes to here so I need to make those bends okay so basically i print out the uh, skeleton in the size that i want it and um, i vaguely measure from the head right the way back and down and then i add a little bit more then i times it by two because i fold it over whoops there we go i'll fold it over um let me go to a bigger shot shall i because i fold it over okay and um 
that's where I start with my head so let me do that and as you can see I've got all different thicknesses of wire here and I've also got some millinery wire so um, yeah so millinery wire um, very good but it's also really really difficult to bend so there are pluses and minuses to all of these depending on what I'm actually trying to get out of it so um, here we go we will start basically I'm going to do a bit of a round bit for a head coming back and then I need to join another piece which will come down and make legs right here we go this is where I can't decide where I'm left-handed or right-handed it's um, a sad state of affairs okay squash that together I always end up making um, two because sometimes the first one's not quite the ticket um, basically and often I want to remind myself in case I want to come back and do another one let me get my ply no don't want those I have a big set of pliers here somewhere there we go oh right there we go and we'll bend that in a minute Ooh. there we go right boom 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 and then that goes around there as i say i this is where i always like to have a brief look at one picture this picture too because I know it's not going to go much beyond that so I am just gonna good goodness seems to be knocking everything all over the place so um, yeah I'm just gonna leave it like that so I can play around with that that's gonna come back to there okay let's bend a bit more like I say there's nothing there is nothing scientific about my making of an armature. I think people get quite um, worried about doing it, but I think it's like many things, you just need to do it. Right, so we get back to there. So then we're going to start with our, with our legs. Okay. So let me start with the um I'm gonna stay with the 14 I think I went for. Okay, so I'm now going to join a big piece which will form the legs and that big piece that I'm doing will go back and do the spine. This is not measured at this stage at all. I do, I measure what I'm using so then when I can see what I'm left with. 30, 40. And we'll see what I can look with hopefully next time. I say hopefully. Right, so that's. Um, Fold that in half. There we go. Okay. Right. Let's see if I can get this on camera. 
without stabbing myself. Oh, that's the heat coming on, if you can hear that. A bit cold here in the studio today. Okay, so... And then this one this way. I'm gonna bend slightly off of camera here because there we go. Okay, so there's kind of my little shoulder bit. That's a bit more than that. So I'm gonna take it round again like I say but not science in my book right now let's bring these back so that we can form the back and go down to the legs right so just start make sure that's as even as it can be okay twist again Where am I? It's when I get to this stage that I think, oh, did I actually use enough wire? Um, and so this is why sometimes I'm already planning the second one, which I can get done. Um, hopefully more accurately, or it could just be beginner's luck. But I get it right. Okay, a bit more. checking keep checking okay probably just that one we'll do it yeah because then that will get there okay right so now I need so this is quite this is where I make my decision as to whether the wire that I'm going to now wrap around the legs is going to be exactly the same wire or whether it might be a little bit thinner or sometimes um, I would leave it exactly as it is and just put something like a pipe clean around it which makes it easier to um, add the fiber when you start off basically um, but the tiger has lovely strong legs I intend to put him into the crouching position and so I need some strong um, wire to make sure that basically you can do it several times and it's not going to you know break and get um, is it wire fatigue I heard someone call it recently I thought that was probably a very good way of describing it so that's 18 and that's 14 so that would be like that if I have a look at my let me have a look at my dog's leg mm. so that was all using um, 18 so I'm going to do that yep decisions 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 right okay now when I'm doing the leg I'm not going to do the whole foot because I'm going to do all that in fiber so I'm only going to bring it down to and then do a loop where I can sort of attach the foot as it were the foot is a whole a whole skill in itself let's put it that way right that's 18 put that out of the way okay let's bring this in
Now then, let's assume we need it about the same, shall we? Big assumption, obviously. And then add a bit for good measure. And then for the back. I mean, I think I've got plenty there. Yeah, you've got plenty there. So, um, I will no doubt be lopping bits off when I get to the end. I don't skimp when it comes to the wire because I have to say the most frustrating thing is if you haven't done it long enough it's really easy to chop it off um, and just frustrating if you could have just added a little bit more and it would have been good to go right so as I say not making a big deal about those shoulders but just going to, it's probably a good idea once I get this bit done to measure the length of the legs that I've ended up with. No, let's not do that that way. Do that that way. I'm not sure it makes a difference, but for some reason, in that second, I thought it did. Okay, let me do a, a brief measurement so you to there about six and then you to there are about seven so it's about thirteen and then a bit more yep you're gonna wait to get There you go, 13. Boom, 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 boom. much get this bit right I think that little bit there which is pretty amazing so one piece was the right length <laughs> there we go there you go 13 possibly just one too many Yep, 13. Right. This side we have got six. That's six and a half, isn't it? Six and a half. Four to ten and a half, sixteen and a half. So a bit like a scarecrow, isn't it, at the moment? Boom. <laughs> I 
like I say, you are obviously going to fill this out with um, fibre and all sorts, but this is more to do with when I'm posing to actually having the joints in the right place so that then when I bend those legs into the crouching by the water, they're going to behave like they should do. I think I said in the VT that um, I was going to make sure I did the initial muscle quite soft. I said 16 and a half, didn't I? Yeah. Um, so that when I put it into that crouching position, the muscles move where I need them to in the same way that they would do in life. A bit more. Okay. Let's start with this side. And it doesn't matter how accurately I measure this, I will still have one leg shorter and longer than the other. And I will adjust that as I do the sculpting. This is when I start doing the bending. So let's get them over. Okay, now you're going to go forward anyway, aren't you? So I'll we'll just put that into position like that because that's the way they will go. They'll actually go forward that way to start with. Okay. There we go. Well, it goes backwards actually because that bit. We kind of start my leg bit from there because that's the shoulder bit. So it is forward already. You've got a bit of a cold back to there. And, um, yeah, make sure you've got that neck there. Right. Okay. And I'm going to get to that and bend to there. And then we've got that area for the foot. So, where did we bend it at? Yep, it was the seven. Okay, and with that. and a half to be honest, five and a half almost six. Five and a half almost six is about there. Let's have a look. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So that will be the foot which I will just curl round because it, that's just the area that I will use to hold the fibres or if I do decide to do little toes with wire it would go through that through that little bit there basically okay we'll go over to here and hope that sorts itself out no idea why that's doing that Okay, we'll see. 30 minutes in and the uh, camera's gone a bit odd, but anyway, the main one, the overhead is fine. Okay, so let's carry on. So that's that, and then that's kind of that. Move that there. Basically, we've got a little bit of a good bit of an ankle there, which comes down into that big pool. So, we'll once again produce a, a rounding bit. Which, as I say will be either used or cut off basically depending on when I get there how useful that is but at this stage it just gives me my my skeleton from which to build basically there we go gonna just go back to that one a minute
Okay, so here we are. One completed armature, all ready to um, get the next step, which is to start adding the fibre, which in this case, well, I don't know, actually, I say in this case, like I made a decision. Um, I'm sure I'll make a decision when I get to that exact point, because the next step is to decide whether I'm going to wrap any um, pipe cleaner around it um, to help the wool attach to the armature without it spinning around. Um, sometimes it works just fine without it and it all depends whether I'm going to use um, wool fibre for the core or whether I decide to use the recycled plastic bottles which um, as I've mentioned before I, I like the concept of that because we're stopping it going into landfill or in the sea um, and we're using it for something which isn't going to be thrown away <laughs> fully <laughs> anyway so yeah that's the next step um and i will come back when i've got some of that done um and show you and i'll what i'll try and do is do um, a video of it even if it's sped up as opposed to going through in great detail because otherwise we'll be here for a very long time anyway so see you very soon <laughs>